In the late 1700s, settlers followed Daniel Boone through the Cumberland Gap into Kentucky. They hunted, grew crops, and lived in small villages. The lands of their new homes must have seemed wild and untouched. But along this southern edge of the Ohio Valley, people hunted, gardened, and raised their families centuries before the arrival of the pioneers. Fort Ancient is a term that archaeologists have applied to the village farming people who lived in the middle Ohio Valley from around 1000 AD to contact when U Europeans first came into the Ohio Valley. From 1000 AD to about 1750 is the late prehistoric period. These are hunter-gatherer farming peoples. The Fort Ancient people are a culture in the late prehistoric period. Their lives were, uh, they were agriculturalists, they were farmers. The primary plants they grew in their gardens uh, in their agricultural fields were corn, beans, and squash. Uh, they also grew some tobacco, and they also grew uh, starchy, oily seeded plants like kenopodium. With corn and squash and beans, they were able to start settling down into an area um, and have a home base. People might recognize those three as the three sisters, called the three sisters. These plants were uh, multi-cropped in their fields. And then they also would have hunted. And so, you know, and their main uh, food animals they hunted for meat were uh, deer, elk, bear, turkey, and, ju and just about any other small animal. They hunted for the community. They harvested and planted for the community. They made everything that they used, and they utilized everything they could out of the environment. So they would have been very aware of the sunrise, when the sun rises in the sky, when the moon rises, where it sets. These are things they would have tracked. You know, if you're an agricultural pe people, you, you sort of need to know when's the best time to plant. You know, when are you going to harvest? From a certain perspective, the Fort Ancient people always lived in their church. Their church surrounded them. Their village was their church. Their church was their village. The world was their church. Around 1200 AD, they, they moved into more circular communities. And so these were uh, organized as concentric rings around a central plaza. Uh, much like if you look at a, a central park in a city today, uh, that would have been pretty much an open space where people congregated, kept fairly clean. And on the many of those villages, they buried the dead in a ring uh, around the plaza, and then you would have the houses as the next ring. Between the houses and the cemetery, again, they kept that area fairly clean. That was their front yard, and that was also where they were maintaining the cemeteries of, of their kin. And then, much like people today, they threw out their trash in back of their houses. Around AD 1400, they congregated in, within bigger communities. They pretty much outgrew the circular arrangement of houses, and so their houses really were more as, uh, organized as clusters around the community, and their cemeteries were in distinct cemetery areas that were marked in different uh, families would use different particular areas. You might consider these folk tribal peoples. In a tribal group, their leaders, their political leaders, their economic leaders, are not born into the role that they have. Your status wasn't a chief status. It's not something, you didn't just inherit it. So it wasn't like uh, you're, because your father was the chief that you were destined to be the chief and your sons were destined to be the chiefs after you. Women did achieve status, we believe, in these societies too, for, for, for their actions and, what, and uh, how they behaved in different councils and different groups. And so not only were they exchanging goods, they were probably exchanging ideas too. One way you can, can gain power within your uh, village and, and in places is by going to another area, getting information, coming back. And if you control information, people think, hey, this person really knows something and that can give you power and prestige. The Fort Ancient homeland is in the middle Ohio Valley. And the rule of thumb is it extends from the falls of the Ohio at Louisville, what is now Louisville, to upstream 
to Parkersburg, West Virginia, north to Columbus, Ohio, and south to south of Corbin, Kentucky. Transportation for the Fort Ancient people was all about their feet. They did not have horses. They walked the trails that crisscrossed the landscape, connecting villages to each other, and the long distance walks they would take on trading expeditions. In terms of traveling, when they're moving between villages, you could use the rivers, and they did have uh, canoes. Uh, but in Kentucky, a lot of travel that, uh, was overland. So that's why even historically, you have what's called the warrior's path. And you know that's what uh, Daniel Boone and many other people come. When they come across the Cumberland Gap, they're coming across Native American trails that were there for centuries before them. Fort Ancient people were a thriving farming culture in the Ohio Valley when the first appearance of European infectious diseases arrived. The first disease or the most virulent disease that arrived was smallpox. Between 75 and 90 percent of the indigenous people who lived in the Ohio Valley died. The people who were most susceptible were the very young and the very old. The saddest part of that is that the people who died were the future and the past of Fort Ancient Peoples. If you look nowadays at Detroit, that population didn't just disappear, it moved. It moved to an area that was better for the population economically, socially. And we believe that Fort Ancient kind of dispersed north. The Fort Ancient culture exists through the archaeological sites and material culture in those archaeological sites. The Fort Ancient people exists today in diverse indigenous peoples in the places that they used to live. We live in their homeland.